Hi everybody, in this video we are looking at homeostasis in plants and specifically we're looking at stomatal opening, so how plants open and close their stomata. So first of all we need to understand why um, they need to control that, so under what conditions would plants um, kind of want, if you like, their stomata to be open and when do they want to close them. Um, so here's a, a leaf and here are some stomata, um, actually these are the guard cells. So if you have a look here, um, so here we've got two guard cells. Um, at the moment, this guard cell, these guard cells are in a position so the stomata is closed. So there's no opening there into the inside of the leaf. And because these stomata are closed, that means that carbon dioxide is not able to enter the leaf. If there's sunlight, then obviously the plant is going to want to be able to do photosynthesis in which case the plant needs carbon dioxide. So if there's sunlight, the plant would um, aim to open the stomata so the carbon dioxide can go in. So the stomata, now we can see that they're open, which means that we've got uh, a guard cell, another guard cell, and then this bit here, that's the hole in the middle. So carbon dioxide can go in, but it also means water is able to come out. Let's have a look at this, um, if we look at the cross-section of a leaf. So here we can see a leaf in cross-section, so the different tissues. So here we have the, uh, the, st the stoma here and the guard cells on either side, and then here we've got the air space in the leaf here. So at the moment, uh, the stomata here is open. Um, so if this is sun uh, if there's sunlight hitting the leaf, the stomata is open, and that means that carbon dioxide can go in, but it also means that water vapour is able to come out. Now that in itself isn't uh, a problem, the fact that water is coming out, as long as the plant is able to replace the water it loses by taking water in through the, uh, through the roots. But the plants don't want to be losing water and if they lose too much water then they won't be able to replace it and then that's going to cause problems for the plant, the plant's going to wilt, the cells aren't going to be able to carry out their functions. So in terms of why plants need to control stomatal opening, it's because they don't want to be losing more water than they can replace. So depending on how much carbon dioxide is in this airspace, the plants are able to control um, whether or not their the stomata are open or closed. So if we have quite a low concentration of carbon dioxide in the airspace, then the stomata will stay open because the the plant, the, the leaf, we want to get more carbon dioxide in here to maximise the rate of photosynthesis. But if we have a higher concentration of carbon dioxide in here, then it makes sense to close the stomata. There's already a lot of carbon dioxide in the airspace, which can then diffuse into the cells. So photosynthesis is able to proceed at quite a high rate. We don't need more carbon dioxide coming in. So if we've got plenty of carbon dioxide here, it makes sense to close the stomata because that means that no water is being lost. We can also um, think about a situation where, well, what if there's no light? If it's dark, so we've got no light at all, so it's dark, maybe it's night time, then the plant can't photosynthesize anyway. So if the plant can't photosynthesize, there's no point having this stomata open because the plant doesn't need any carbon dioxide to be going into the into the leaf. So if it left the, them open, it would be losing water. So it's dark, close the stomata. If it's light, open the stomata. So the plant controls the opening and closing depending on whether or not it needs carbon dioxide, so it depends on the concentration of carbon dioxide in the airspace, it depends on whether or not there is light, um, and it also depends on whether or not there's water. So if there's water stress, so if there isn't enough water to replace, um, so enough water in like the soil, for example, to replace any water that's lost as vapour from the leaves, then again the plant would close those uh, stomata. Okay, so we know uh, why they might need to open and close, but we now need to understand how 
the stomata um, open. Once we know how they open, it's just going to be the opposite to see how they close. Okay, so here is a guard cell, and here's another guard cell. So at the moment, um, you can see that these guard cells here are touching each other here, so there's no gap in the middle. So the, uh, the pore, the, st the stoma there, is closed. Now these are plant cells, which means they have a cell wall. And the cell wall is thicker here and thinner on the outside. Um, and again, it's thicker on the side that's uh, in the middle there next to the, the, the opening, and then it's thinner on this side over here. Um, and that's important in terms of understanding how the stomata are going to open in a second. To open the stomata, we need to increase the volume of water inside the cells. Because as you know, if water goes into the cells, they're going to become more turgid, the volume increases, um, and they become bigger. So we want these cells, the guard cells, to become bigger. So to do that, we have to add water um, into the cells. Now, if you want water to enter into a cell, water will move by osmosis down the water potential gradient. If we think that water is going to come in and these guard cells are then going to get bigger, um, it, we need to think about the direction that they're going to increase in. And what you can see here, so these little lines that I've just drawn, this represents that there are um, sort of microtubules which cross the width of the guard cells here. Um, and what they do is they prevent the guard cells from getting any wider. So if water goes into this guard cell here, the guard cell is going to increase in volume, but it can't just get wider this way. Because these, it's a bit like having sort of like scaffolding across it, which prevents it from getting any bigger in this direction. And likewise, this guard cell here it cannot get any bigger in this direction. So that's a restriction. The other restriction is that at the top and the bottom, where the two guard cells meet, they're actually joined together. And what that means is that um, the cells here are fixed in place. They can't move up this way, and they can't move down this way. So they're fixed at this point, they're fixed at this point, and they can't get wider in this direction. If they can't get wider, that means the only thing that can happen is that they can get longer. But the problem is they're longer, but they can't actually move this way. So how, what's going to happen to the cell? Think about it like this. If we have something that's this sort of shape and we have a box that we want to fit it into, clearly this is longer than the box. So the only way we're going to be able to fit this in is if we bend it. A similar sort of thing happens. If we add water into the guard cell, the only thing that can happen is that it's going to bend. And that means it's getting longer without um, moving in this direction or getting wider in this direction. So what we see, let me speed this up a little bit, this is what the guard cells look like when it's closed. And then when it's open, they look like this. So the position here and here is the same. The guard cells have got longer, but because they can't get that they can't move up or down, they have to bend. It's the only way that they can uh, like accommodate that increase in volume. So when water goes into the guard cells, the stomata opens. So we know we need to get water in. And we know that um, when water goes in, that means that the guard cells change their shape and the stomata open. But how does water get in? What causes water to enter the guard cell? OK, so here's our uh, guard cells with the stomata closed. And the first thing that happens is hydrogen ions leave the cell. Now, that happens because of a hydrogen ion pump, a proton pump 
in the cell membrane of the guard cells. So because it's a pump, ATP is used. So hydrogen ions, protons are pumped out of the cell. Now, if you remember we said before, if water's going in, that means it has to move down a water potential gradient. So what we're trying to achieve is a, a lower water potential inside and a higher water potential outside so that water moves into the cell. So once hydrogen ions, protons have been pumped out, what that does is it allows um, potassium ions to be moved in. So this movement here actually opens the potassium ion channels. You don't need to understand how that happens. It's just that the, um, the build-up of the hydrogen ions causes the potassium ion channels to open. So we end up with lots of potassium going in. And because all the potassium goes in, that lowers the water potential inside the cell. And if the water potential decreases, then water will move in. And that's how it works. If you want to go the other way, then once you've got um, the guard cells that have uh, opened the stomata, if they're in this position here, then they'll stay like this as long as um, they stay full of water, which means as long as that water potential gradient is there. So if we want to um, go back the other way, then we just have to shut off this hydrogen ion pump. If you stop the hydrogen ion pump, then the potassium ion channels will close, so potassium will not move in, the water potential is going to increase, and the hydrogen will move out. And that's how plants control the opening and closing of their stomata.